everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I have a little bit of time, so I wanted to do another entry into my series of Have You Heard. So this particular album that I'm going to show, I actually have to really thank um, Jazz Prophet because I didn't know about this album and the, the um, title, you know, the leader of this session is actually one of my favorite players and I'm still kind of learning his catalog because it's so long and he was active for so many years compared to some other sad, you know, sad stories in jazz that they were, you know, died very young. He didn't. He, he lived quite a long life. And um, so did actually the rest of his family. And uh, once I say his name, then obviously you'll realize what I mean by the rest of his family. But um, one of my favorite players of all time is Thad Jones. I love Thad Jones. I think one of the things that I love about Thad Jones so much is that he has so many um, musical quotes within his playing. So if you listen to a lot of his stuff, he actually will quote other players and other songs in his solos. And I just, I, I find that so intriguing because I just, I, it's like you got to look for it and try to find it. I mean, and he was a fantastic trumpet player. That's not the only reason I like him, his tone and just his, just his quality of his sound was great. I loved it. And he, he was so versatile. He could play bebop. He could play hard bop. He played a lot of big band stuff, um, especially once he played with Mel Lewis. Um, and he was at the Vanguard for years and years and years. You know, they were pretty much the staple band there for, uh, gosh, I think it was like 25 or 30 years from like the 60s almost into the mid 80s. So maybe it was like 25 years. They were like the staple band. I think it was every Monday night they would play. Um, Renaissance actually released a really good title uh, for last past record store day. And um, that was uh, the like 1961 Vanguard Sessions of the Lewis and Thad Jones Orchestra. So it was a great title. Um, I've listened to it a few times digitally. I just haven't picked up the actual album because I unfortunately find um, that a lot of Renaissance stuff is not the best quality, yet they sell for a whole lot of money because they limit them. But I've had a couple of Renaissance titles and I, I don't think the quality is, especially on the jackets, is very good for the price that they charge. So. Um, I always try to search for them on the secondary market when they come up. That typically don't buy them on the first. Um, so just a slight tip, I guess. Um, sorry for anyone that's a Renaissance lover. Um, so the album I'm going to show is actually an album that was on United Artists, um, which, you know, doesn't have a whole lot of jazz, really. Um, that's like hard bop and later, I guess. Um, certainly a whole lot of um, 40s and uh, kind of bebop and big band swing type stuff I've noticed on United Artists. But this album, Thad Jones, United Artist, and it's called uh, Motor City Scene. And it's kind of a pretty cool cover of Detroit. Um, and there's your back cover. And this one's a really, really awesome copy. Uh, you might be able to see that. Uh, promotional stamp right there and there's your lineup so you got Thad Jones who's actually playing cornet and uh, flugelhorn on this which is really cool um, you don't see too much uh, I haven't seen too many albums where he's playing cornet and so Billy Mitchell's playing tenor great uh, great tenor player Al Gray was on trombone Tommy Flanagan on piano a great piano player Paul Chambers on bass you can't go wrong there and then his brother, Elvin Jones, on drums. And that's what I meant by his family lived a long time. He had Elvin Jones, his brother, and then Hank Jones, the piano player, also, you know, part of the three Jones brothers. And so this one's a pretty cool one because both Jones, you know, he's playing with one of his brothers. There's a few Hank Jones albums that um, Elvin, and, uh, that Thad and Hank play together. I don't know if there's an album where all three of them are playing on it. If there is, please someone tell me that because I'd like to learn about that. Um, and uh, here's the really awesome part of this one. And uh, it was actually the first promo I've ever gotten 
and it's a United Artist promo on a white label. And you can see underneath the side, it says promotion and it's a deep groove white label. Really cool. It was the first promotion uh, album I've ever gotten. Uh, since then, I do actually have one other promo, but this was the first one. And uh, this is a really good album. It's a, it's just a good foundational album. I'm not going to say that it's trend, you know, transformative. It certainly didn't do anything outside of the box, but it's just really good. And there is some fantastic uh, bass work for, by Paul Chambers on this album. There's great drumming. Of course, Thad sounds great on the cornet. Um, Flanagan is really going for it. And actually, the Al Gray on trombone really does some great stuff here, too. I'm not the biggest trombone fan, but on this album, it's really nice. Um, there's some J.J. Johnson trombone albums I really like but I'm just not a huge trombone fan comparatively. I really like the sound of the cornet. I'm a huge Nat Adderley fan. I think his cornet playing is great. I, I don't know why Nat Adderley doesn't get as much love um, as some other uh, trumpet and cornet players, but uh, maybe because he played just you know so much cornet and not as much trumpet, and so people don't really mention cornet as much as trumpet, but uh, Nat Adderley's a great cornet player. And so, uh, let me know if you've ever heard this album. I had not heard this album until like two weeks ago. And uh, I'm so glad I did because I really, really enjoy it. And there is some fantastic Paul Seamer's work on this album. I got to say, and I know I'm biased, obviously, being a bass player, but um, this is some really good bass work by Paul Chambers. Really um, some great stuff. I think it's, it's different from his Blue Note stuff because I think... Um, he didn't play with Thad Jones all that much. Thad Jones only really has like three records on Blue Note. So I don't know how much he played with Paul Chambers, but um, you could see that Paul Chambers sounds like he's having a really good time on this album. And, and I love that. I, I love hearing um, players having a good time. And I think that's one of the reasons I like Thad Jones so much. You could just hear the joy in his playing. When he plays, you could tell he's enjoying it. And you could tell that he's expressing himself, whereas I feel like there's some other artists that you could feel like they're just kind of going through the motions in a way. And I never feel that with a Thad Jones album. I feel I always feel like he's enjoying it and he's loving what he's doing. And that's why I like Thad Jones so much. And honestly, that that Renaissance title I mentioned, that Village Vanguard, if you get a chance, listen, it's online. You can hear it. I think it's on Amazon Prime um, included. You could just hear the energy and the joy that all those players are having in that session. And that is, I think, the essence of what a Thad Jones record is. You just, it's joy. You hear the joy. And this one is no exception. You hear the joy on this. You hear it in all the other players that are playing on it. And that's I, one of the reasons I like this album so much. Um, and, and I think, you, you know, it's worth checking out. So if you have a chance, check out Thad Jones, uh, Motor City Scene, Detroit, He's from Detroit. A bunch of the, all those other guys on that album, you know, are from Detroit. And this was a Detroit album, United Artists, I think, even recorded in Detroit. So um, if you get a chance, check it out. It's a great album. And uh, I will see you guys soon. I'm going to try to get one more video out tonight um, for this series. So uh, check that out as well. Thank you guys and uh, see you next time.